required to gather the quorum and the of the members physically present in the same location because it is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans. So this meeting complies with the governor's executive order number 71. Will the city recorder please call the roll? Yes. Taking roll call, Mayor Nois. Present. Alderperson Blanks. Here. Almacher. Here. Barry. Here. Blackwell. Here. Dunn. Here. McGee. Here. That's seven present. Thank you. Thank you. Is, is Reverend Norman on the call? Yes. Mr. Reverend Norman, would you please lead us in the invocation and, and Pledge of Allegiance? Let's pray. Please stand. I want to thank you for who you are. And we come to you in prayer this afternoon for our mayor, for the aldermen, for the various city officials who are gathered here. We pray uh, for your continued protection over our community, especially for those who are sick and their families, and for the families of those who have lost their lives in these times. We pray for your provision for those who are in need and for those who are hurting in these days. We pray for our health care workers, our first responders, uh, that you would continue to protect and strengthen them. And we look to you, O oh Lord, as our source of strength, as your word says your name is a strong tower. And when we trust in you, we know you will keep us safe. We come to you today for this meeting asking for your wisdom, for godly counsel, because you told us that we need wisdom to ask of you, and you will give it. We pray for those in leadership, uh, that they would depend upon you, and, and that they would have the wisdom to do what is best for all. We pray for your grace and mercy, uh, that it would follow us all the days of our lives. And may you have mercy upon us uh, always and be our helper. Uh, help us, Lord, to do what is right. Help us to love mercy. Uh, help us to walk humbly with you, our God. And Lord, we look forward uh, to the great future you have in store for us. We pray for your blessings upon the citizens of the city of Tullahoma, and we ask all these things in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice, for all. Thank you, Reverend Norman. Sorry, come on. <clears throat> At this time, we do have a proclamation that I would like to present. This is a proclamation regarding congenital heart defects awareness week. I made this presentation last week to Miss Amanda Shriver and her son Grant, who is a sufferer of congenital heart defects. Whereas the health and well being of congenital heart patients is of paramount importance, and whereas each year in the United States more than 40,000 babies are born with a congenital heart defect, and whereas the medical community has identified congenital heart defects as the leading cause of birth defect related deaths, and whereas medical research can provide more identifiable means of the origin and symptoms of congenital heart defects, and whereas there's no cure for congenital heart defects, and it is a lifelong disease requiring ongoing specialized care. And whereas fewer than 10% of adults with congenital heart diseases are receiving recommended care. And where it is crucial that individuals planning a family defects, and whereas congenital heart defects awareness week provides the opportunity for patients and families affected by this condition to share their experiences and knowledge so that the general public may be aware of how it affects, how it affects our lives. So now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Ray Nois, mayor of the city of Tallahoma, Tennessee, by virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim February the 7th through the 14th, 2021, as Congenital Heart Defects Awareness Week in the city of Tallahoma and encourage all citizens to join in this observance. So that was presented to Ms. Shriver and her son, Grant, last week. 
At this time, I believe we have another special award. Uh, Ms. Moody, would you like to make that presentation? Thank you, Mayor. And I will have uh, Fire Chief Richard Chastain join me, and I believe Deputy Chief uh, Kenny Pearson is also with us. Uh, tonight, our February Employee of the Month, um, her name is Melissa Allen. She's certainly very special to us. She's our uh, community coordinator, and she's been nominated, and let me read this nomination to you. She's been nominated for her selfless service to the community and the fire department. Melissa works to ensure our citizens have fire safety measures installed within their homes through our smoke alarm program. She assists the residents of Tullahoma daily and is always kind, courteous, and professional. She's also continues to provide information through our social media platform and to let citizens know areas to avoid when fire operations are involved. Melissa continues to look for training opportunities with other communities to continue to enhance the programs we already have in place. She is a blessing to have at the fire department and uh, they said they don't know how they could do the job without her. When thinking about nominating Melissa, one quote stood out, service is the lifeblood of any organization. Everything flows from it and is nourished by it. Customer service is not a department, it's an attitude, which I feel Melissa embraces wholeheartedly. And so we echo that and uh, we really do value and appreciate Melissa. I think it's a special night tonight to also be able to honor you. Melissa does a lot of work um, supporting the annual report that you had in your packet. And so just congratulations, Melissa, and thank you so much for being uh, such an example and a joy to work with. Thank you. Yes. I'll I'll turn over to, to the chiefs to uh, add any words that they'd like to. Well, thank you, Ms. Moody. I would like to uh, turn it over to Deputy Chief Kenneth Pearson. He is the uh, person that nominated her. And so I would like to allow him to speak for just a minute, please. Since I didn't do a sound check, I hope I'm coming through all right. <laughs> you are. Uh, Melissa, we really appreciate you and everything that you do. Uh, it was our pleasure to nominate you for this award. Thank you. Thank y'all. I really appreciate it. I couldn't do my job without you guys either. Y'all are awesome. I just really appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. This means the world to me. Y'all, y'all really, y'all just, y'all don't know what I'd do without you guys either. I thank y'all. Thank y'all. Um, I really, it means a lot. Thank you guys. And Melissa, when we have the opportunity, I will give you this in person and we'll take a photo. Thank you. Thank I you. really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You, <laughs> Thanks. Okay. At this time, uh, we would like to open the uh, floor for comments from the citizens. Do we have any comments from the citizens? If we have no comments from the citizens, I do believe we have. I do. Uh, I believe we have um, Mr. Lee online, who's an applicant for the appointment to the board of, to the airport board. Mr. Lee, are you on? I think there was a citizen that said that they had a comment, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Barry, I did. Okay. There, I did have a, okay, Mr. Steve Cope was another applicant for the position on the board of mayor and all or on the uh, airport authority. And I just got an email from him this afternoon. I'd like to read it for you at this time as a comment from, this, from him. The dear board, I apologize that I'm unable to be on the call this evening. I've had plans to be in Nashville this evening for several weeks. I want to thank you for the opportunity to apply. I served as liaison to the airport authority during my years as all of them and enjoyed that experience. And it's my belief that the airport is an economic development opportunity for the city of Tullahoma. I've been in the aerospace support business for the past 35 years. I've also been an executive position of business development and marketing for those many years. 
I feel that I can contribute to the further development of the airport should be should I be honored to serve in that capacity. With best regards, Mayor Cope. He all, all, uh, Mr. Cope also had attached his system participation form that's in your packet. And if you look at the number of things that he's done in the city, one of the things he failed to mention in that in that uh, report was, yes, Mr. Cope did serve as mayor. So he didn't think that was noteworthy to note, I suppose. <clears throat> okay, I'll just laugh. So anyway, that's uh, from Steve Cope. So we'll get into that at a later at a later point. Uh, if there are no further comments from the citizens, we'll. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there's. Yes, Mr. Uh, Gary. Marie uh, said that she had a comment. We had somebody speak up, so they had a comment. Thank you, Daniel. Can I go ahead and read my statement? You have two minutes. Okay. And will you, will you please say your name and your address? I will state my name, Marie Desolates. I will not state my address. I sent that to you via email, though. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. So this is for all my battle buddies who have served that are now fighting mental illness. Mental illness is not a term that should be thrown around so loosely to poke fun at or to joke about to make herself laugh, as our alderman has stated. I'm an Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom Army veteran who has served in Iraq from 2009 until 2010. I have served stateside even longer. I also have PTSD, a mental illness. I couldn't tell you how enraged I was to see the things that she was posting about people with mental disabilities, such as her statement, liberalism is a mental disorder. It is a serious topic and statements like those only worsen the stigma that surrounds it. She's using the media attention as a spotlight to feed her own ego and she's not taking the aforementioned topic seriously, nor considering the severity of the consequences of her actions. She knows the climate right now and she still continues to add fuel to the fire. Besides posing in pictures with the Confederate flag, condoning abject racism or using the N word and it being in a video that has circulated through all of social media platforms, not to mention newspapers from here to Florida, but not one time has she taken accountability or, or apologized for it but continues to make excuses and still insists on sharing her controversial racist rants on Facebook. And I quote, Confederates were more American than what they were given credit. The Civil War was over states' rights and taxations. And there were thousands of black men who fought in the Confederate army. I believe Pastor Tobert was accurate in his claim at the last meeting stating that Jenna missed those classes of actual history from 1620 till 1908. That's the only explanation I can come up with that I can come up with as to why she would think that any black man during that period were fighting for states' rights and taxation because they weren't. They were literally fighting for their lives, for their freedom, because that's what they were told. <laughs> if they did so, they would be free. I need Jenna to take responsibility for her own actions, which she has yet to do. She clearly doesn't realize that she has a moral and ethical obligation to serve this community in an unbiased manner. Jenna needs to resign or be removed. She does not represent me, nor the greater good of Tullahoma. Thank you all. Okay, are there Mayor, any other comments from citizens? Mayor, I believe we have Michael Lee uh, on the on, available. Okay, Mr. Lee, would you care to, would you care to make a point? Uh, it says the host needs to disable my video. Um, okay. Well, we can hear you, so I know that part is working. Did you get an invitation now to start your video? Uh, not yet. There you are, we can see you now. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is uh, Mike Lee. Uh, I'm a, a 20 plus year resident of Tullahoma. I came here to work for UTSI in the flight research department at the airport. 
Uh, I'm a hangar owner and an aircraft owner and a pilot. I have a, a BS degree in electrical engineering from Penn State and a master's degree <clears throat> in aviation systems from UT. I'm a U US Air Force veteran and I worked in electronic communications. Uh, I have a FAA airframe mechanics license <clears throat> And I previously worked for uh, Boeing helicopters as a lead instrumentation engineer uh, on the uh, MH-47E Chinook helicopter, uh, some of which are based in at Fort Campbell. Uh, most of my experience at the Tullahoma Airport was as a flight test instrumentation engineer and a flight crew member for data acquisition flights. I have, um, I have no aspiration to uh, uh, amass power and influence for myself or steer business uh, to my own direction. Uh, I want to work on the airport authority because I like working in aviation and I would enjoy working with the current group of members. Thank you, Mr. Lee. I appreciate your applying. Are there any other comments from citizens? If not, we'll we'll go to the reports from the members of the Board of Mayor and all of them. Vice Mayor Blanks, we'll start with you this evening. We've been postponing you till last in the past, but we're going to let you go first today. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Since our last meeting, there was a Tullahoma Utilities Authority meeting. Um, everything's going. Oh, her face is red. She didn't like that. I should have looked at her while I was reading. Ms. Moody, can you please mute Marie DeVillis' phone? Oh, thank you. Go ahead. Hey. Are you ready for me? <laughs> no. Um, Who unmuted me? Ms. Moody, can you mute Mr. Billis's contact? Thank you. Okay, I'll push on. I believe we're uh, ready again. Okay, uh, Tullahoma Utilities Authority meeting. Um, everything's going well there. I think we had some minor outages uh, over the weekend due to the snowfall out in the Lake Hills area, but I'm I think they got fixed pretty quickly. Hopefully, we're usually on our downtime is not very very long. Um, we're plus fourteen for um, light tube signups for the month. We're up to forty one sixty seven, uh, so that's doing well. Um, as far as out art council and art art things go, we have the watercolor exhibit started February sixth, goes through the twenty seventh. Um, it's one of six or seven uh, sites across the U.S. where this has been exhibited, so it's a good get for the um, arts community here locally. You can go on the Tullahoma Fine Arts website and reserve your tickets, but I encourage any of you art-minded people, or if you just like to see some pretty paintings, um, check that out. Um, we have Valentine's Day coming up um, a week from yesterday, uh, so men, remember... Uh, to get your cards, flowers, um, jewelry, chocolates, and in that respect, in, in town we have uh, Woodard's, um, Thompson Jeweler, K Jeweler. We also have the flower shop, Tullahoma House of Flowers, um, Flowers by Faith, and there's one more, K Flowers, I think. Um, uh, also, Giles Dunn is a is a um, jeweler in town and, uh, and if you need chocolate water's edge chocolate so i think i've covered all the local shop telehoma businesses that you can get your valentine's gifts for your uh sweetie either you know for male or female or kids so uh shop telehoma that's all i have tonight mayor thank you i, I hope my husband was taking notes jimmy that, that was great good report Dr. Blank, that was a very timely reminder for all of us. Robin, oh, Perry, Robin, you have a report, sir. 
Uh, Mr. Mary, since our last meeting, I turned another year older. I hit that 40, so now I officially uh, fit in that age uh, group, discrimination group there. Uh, on the 15th, I have joined the uh, South Central Tennessee Tourism Association, and there will be a meeting on that. Um, so I'm kind of excited about some things that are coming from there. Uh, you you probably read in the newspapers about some comm center stuff. Um, I won't go into that, but we'll have a meeting on the 10th to discuss some personnel issues. Um, uh, kind of personal projects. I've continued working on a special project that right now is codenamed Whiskey Waterfalls and Wi-Fi. Uh, the kind of sneak peek info is a month long uh, celebration of the culture uh, and history surrounding who we are, where we've been, <clears throat> and where we're going uh, here in, in Tullahoma involving arts and music and, and folk life. So I'm pretty excited about that. Got some really incredible people and um, institutions in the community helping work on that. And Ms. Moody and Winston, I'll be talking with you about that uh, kind of more. Um, I had a community cleanup plan for this coming Saturday, the 13th. Uh, bad scheduling on my part. My sister's birthday is this weekend, so I'm headed down to Georgia uh, to spend time with family and uh, see her. Um, so I'm rescheduling that for the 20th, which will be the Saturday after weather permitting. Um, this Thursday, I've got a meeting to continue some conversations and finish the action plan for a grassroots effort, really, to get into neighborhoods, um, to engage and kind of get to know, uh, I've called that Know Thy Neighbor, uh, residents in their homes, in their neighborhoods, um, and to really get to know them and to address some of the housing and living conditions in a couple of the neighborhoods here in, in town. Uh, and finally, I won't say too much, but I started a conversation with you, Mr. Mayor, on one of our existing committees uh, that semi-selfishly made it motivated because I'm a poster child uh, for this, um, to work on a few initiatives surrounding the physical and mental health um, here in, in Tullahoma, not in a bad way, um, but they're just some things that we can do. Um, as a city and as a community to, uh, I'm 40. I gotta start thinking about those things. <laughs> That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Barry. <clears throat> Alderman McGee. Hello. Um, <clears throat> since our last meeting, I did attend the TAEDC meeting um, and um, the exciting news is the purchase of the World War II hangar, the new hangar out there. Um, I believe it's gonna be called Williamson Machinery. So that's exciting. Um, retail consultants um, and businesses are looking and exploring our area. So that's also exciting. And there will be an announcement of two new businesses by the end of the second quarter. Um, also, I um, have worked with Cindy McKinney who is the executive director of the Good Samaritan. Um, recently, um, there was a mishap at the Good Samaritan. And so I just put a plea out there on Facebook. And so I want to thank, publicly thank the people who have um, donated items, needed items to the Good Samaritan. Um, several individuals um, brought things to me to drop off. And I also want to, give a shout out to U.S. Bank. Um, their staff collectively um, bought items to donate to the Good Samaritan. Um, also stopped by and bought some um, Girl Scout cookies from the um, Girl Scout van. I'm, I apologize, I don't know what troop number, but um, I did buy some cookies. Um, also, um, the Housing Authority will they will be having a meeting scheduled for February the 18th. So I'll be able to report at the next 
um, BOMA meeting. And um, I know that 2020 was a difficult year for, um, for a lot of us. Um, and some people are still, you know, having some difficulties. I do have a list from Coffee County Community Care Agency, um, a list of resources for um, and places for people if they need um, any type of help, any type of assistance. I do have um, that list. I will try and screenshot it and put it on my Alderman page. Or if someone would just inbox me or call me, I can meet them to give them this list. Um, it's about four pages. So it's a lot of good information on this sheet. Um, I did tour the Telehoma Fine Arts Center. They have um, did some renovations, um, new lightings and painted some of the rooms um, and it really looks good in there. And I did get a sneak peek of the watercolor exhibit, which is awesome. Um, also, I would like to congratulate Melissa Allen for being the employee of the month. And I think that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McGee. Alderman Dunn. Wow, it's hard to follow all this stuff. Y'all are doing awesome things. So thank you to the, my fellow board members. Um, and also congratulations to Melissa. That's a very well deserved uh, award there. Um, Go Green has been busy, busy. We've got a, a, a few things going on that I first want to thank TVA. We did receive a grant to um, have some community outreach. It's 100% funded by TVA. I'm very excited. Um, this is gonna be in several parts, but I think citizens need to save the date on April 15th. Oh, excuse me, sorry, April. Yes, April, no, sorry, April 9th. I apologize, April 9th. We are going to have um, a rain barrel giveaway at our farmer's market. And so those were all funded through TVA. We also are, uh, we have a partnership with Coca-Cola and they're gonna be um, providing the, the barrels. So the kits are coming from TVA, the barrels are coming from Coca-Cola so um, that we can be good stewards of the citizens tax money. Um, we're also having a compost uh, compost giveaway at the farmer's market, and that's going to be on April 5th, which is the opening day. That's a Monday. It's going to be at South Jackson Civic Center. So if you want to get your stuff, just make sure you, you uh, sign up. It's going to be really, really cool. We'll be talking about how to use these um, different uh, products so that people can, you know, make things a little greener. So that's it. Thank you, Alma Dunn. Hello, everyone. Um, have, hope everybody is having a great day and going to have a great week. Um, since we last met, I too have been pretty busy. Um, one of the things that um, Mayor, myself, and uh, Ms. Blackwell and uh, Mr. Barry have been doing is this elected officials academy. We've been so fortunate to take part in with the state. Um, MTAS puts that on several times a year and, and um, it's like a four week um, class that you take. And so we've been doing that on Wednesday nights and learning lots of good things um, about our charter. And um, we've been on a charter scavenger hunt and, um, and, and really learning about best practices of how to conduct uh, the business of the city. And very thankful to be able to, uh, to do that and participate in that. I too took a tour of the Telehoma Fine Arts Center and got to do a preview of the watercolor exhibits and, and just could not be more impressed with the new leadership um, at that center uh, with Mr. Cole at the, at the head as the uh, executive director. And I'm just very, very impressed with what I see there and it looks fabulous and all the different programs and things that they have for people to do and children to do and classes that they offer. Um, I just really can't sing their praises enough right now and hope everybody will go out there and, and take a look at their website and go visit them and, and figure out, you know, we need to make sure that we're paying attention to the arts here in Tullahoma and, um, you know, see what's going on at South Jackson and see what's going on over there at the, the Fine Arts Center because I promise you will not be disappointed. Um, so normally I do um, a, a small business shout out um, but I kind of wanted to do that to today with the Fine Arts Center. That kind of wanted to be my shout out um, was to the Fine Arts Center and the new leadership and, and everything that they have going on. Because like I said, I just could not be more impressed with uh, Mr. Cole 
and everything that's happening there at the Fine Arts Center. So that board is doing an excel excellent job for sure. Um, I too also joined the South Central Tourism Association for the state of Tennessee in the Become a Tennessean Committee. And um, that committee um, is designated to try to bring more um, people into Tennessee and uh, to get people to encourage people to start businesses um, uh, throughout all of Tennessee, including here in the city of Tullahoma. Um, the increase in commerce obviously affects everybody and, uh, and we want to continue to try to support our small businesses and encourage those, uh, those people to chase their dreams and, and be entrepreneurs and, um, and also philanthropists and, and try to give back to their communities. Um, Mr. Mayor, I think that's about it for this evening. Thank you, Alderman Malmacher, a very good report, very timely. Thank you. Alderman Blackwell. Yes, okay, um, lots going on as well. It's Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month in February. And I wanted to bring that up because this is the month that um, we are trying to go into the school system and talk to our seventh and eighth graders about healthy relationships. Um, that is starting next Wednesday. So beginning next Wednesday and the Wednesday after that, we will be in East Middle School um, with Haven of Hope. I don't really do any talking. I sit there, I introduce Haven of Hope and I let the experts handle it, um, handle the conversation. So we will be in there um, the 17th and the 24th at East Middle School. So I wanna just thank the school system for allowing us this. Thank Kelly Gilbert with um, Haven of Hope as well for facilitating the conversation because it's such an important one right now. Um, I'm also working on something to submit to the newspaper about teen dating violence. Um, it's something that's important, I think, for us to discuss and talk about. Um, another thing on my list to knock off this month is to reach back out to Kirk Glick um, as the weather starts to get better again to start talking about what we can do with Jefferson Street Park now that hopefully in the next few weeks it'll not be too cold to be able to start looking at um, refinishing up that the pavement there. So that's another one. We met with um, the school system to talk about a curriculum that is a fe feasibility for a curriculum over at the schools. And I wanna thank Mayor Nois for bringing that to my attention so that we can start moving that forward. And I was really glad to see, you know, the school, um, what all is happening at it. We, Mayor Nois and I went this past Friday, was it? to uh, meet with the student council to talk about getting the mayor's youth back up and running again. And I, I hadn't been on a tour of the high school in the way that we were given one in a long time. And I, it, I'm just so impressed with the amount of work that's happening there, the way things have changed and grown and the opportunities that our students have. So I just wanted to thank the school system for that and, and to fill you in as well. Um, that's the student government one. Um, I met with a company called Talkspace, and this is my interest, Alderman Barry and Mayor Nois as well. They are a mental health company um, that um, is able to provide support online. Um, and if you guys would like more information, what I've been trying to do is get information. I've, I've talked with Alderman McGee about this, um, about how many, um, what, one of the things they're offering is a subscription-based service um, that is reimbursable for some organizations that they have the ability through CARES Act. Um, so it's something that I've been working on to try to see how we can partner with some of the different organizations in our community to offer mental health care to our citizens. Um, and I, it seems like something you guys are working on too. So we'd love to fill you in more about that at a different place. Um, I too went to the art center, but I went for AWS and it was amazing. Um, check it out if you haven't. It's, you know, it, it is a very rare occurrence for such a um, notable art um, traveling tour to come to a town like our size. We're very blessed to have it. I love, I mean, it is a, an amazing experience. And, you know, I, I encourage all of our community members to take advantage of it. The art is absolutely amazing. And I'm, I'm not an artist. I'm not, I don't have a good eye and I can still really, really appreciate it all. So I wanted to share that. Um, Tullahoma Daycare Center, and we had our board meeting. But then um, on this Thursday at four o'clock, I'm having, instead of my coffee and conversations, I'm having queso and conversations at Camino Real. Um, so it's just a time for citizens to come out and talk to me and ask questions. And um, I can take a list of their questions and I usually send them to poor Mrs. Moody or whoever else to answer them for me if I don't know the answers to them. And that's from four to six, 
Queso and Conversations at Camino Real. And finally, um, this past week, we, um, the Community Council for Diversity and Inclusion, we met and appointed our steering committee and um, other committee members. If you haven't had a phone call from me and you put in an application, you'll likely be getting one tomorrow. I made about 20 calls today and I have about 10 more left, but we're just really excited to get everybody involved and to get started thinking about how we can put together some educational forums and a, a, a diversity celebration event, hopefully around in September. So um, really excited for the work that we're about to start and looking forward to it. Um, next week is a planning commission meeting and school board meeting. Um, just for everyone's information, I will not be at the planning commission meeting this coming week, um, but that is all I have. Thank you, all of them. And Blackwell, you are all doing great, great work as all of them, and I commend you for all of you. As all of them, Blackwell indicated, uh, we did attend the high school on Friday at uh, 720. Kids get up early to go to school, I found out. Anyway, we went to talk with the uh, Mayor's Youth Council, and we do have a plan once we get back to meeting in person, we do have a plan for bringing uh, an honorary alderman back to our to our meetings. They are excited about that, and I am excited about having them come visit with us. We learned about some amazing students there in that Mayor's Youth Council as we met on on Friday. As Alderman Black, uh, Alderman Barry indicated, he's he has agreed to helped me with an activity that I have wanted to continue that Mayor Curley had started, and that was the Get Fit Telehoma. And uh, Alderman Barry had contacted me about helping with that, and I was that was a wonderful gesture, Alderman Barry. I appreciate you doing that, and I hope that you can lead that initiative with getting physical fitness get fit physically and get fit mentally. I want to add that component to that this year and, and ways to help uh, some of the people maybe at the a senior citizens area, they might be interested in playing games that simulate their mental capacity, learning to play bridge, learn to play chess, learning to do board games of, of that type. So I know you'll be, a, you'll be a great advocate for getting that done. So thank you very much for leading that initiative. Uh, last Friday, I, along with some of the uh, city staff, were invited to tour the new uh, Parkview Senior Living Facilities over on Cedar Lane. We did that. Uh, they gracious enough to extend lunch to us, but we toured the wonderful facilities that they have there. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, assisted living, it's not a nursing home. They want you to know that it's, it's for senior living, 55 and over. And the amenities there are just outstanding. I invite any of you to uh, come by my office and look at the brochure that they left and share one. And if you have a chance, go by and just take a look at it because you could be an advocate for helping them fill that place with 55 and over people. I believe that's all that I have as my, for my mayor's report. I was going to comment about uh, Alderman, uh, or former Alderman and Mayor Hope for not being with us, but he's already put his letter in, into the record for that. So with, with that, we'll go to a report from our city attorney. Mr. Worsham, are you on? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Good, very good. Uh, first of all, I want to point out to you that uh, I did my research relative to um, Mr. Cirk being eligible to serve another term as a member of the airport authority, and we've codified that at the mayor's suggestion uh, in the ordinance that appears in your agenda on page 71 so that that issue will not arise again. We'll be able to handle that in the future if we have people that have served uh, partial terms due to uh, taking over the term of someone else. I hope that's satisfied you all. Uh, we're working on continuing to work on the property tax sale. We're continuing to identify uh, people that are owners of property, that are the heirs of people who've died and things of that nature. I want to also warn everyone that uh, 
as of the end of this month, we will be filing suit for the 2019 property taxes so that anyone that has not paid them yet should do so to avoid uh, penalties and interest that will accrue after that date. We're also working with planning and codes on a number of matters. We have a new uh, employee down there that's doing a really great job inspecting things, and we're working with him. And we're identifying some property in the Jefferson Street area that we may be able to acquire in some manner uh, that will be a benefit to the city in the future. Ms. Moody is working with, with us on that. That's all I have tonight. Thank you, Mr. Worsham. Ms. Moody, we are uh, City Administrator's report. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to let you all know I have a student, a graduate student intern working with me for this semester. Uh, his name's Jordan Wilkins. He's from Smithville, Tennessee, and attending TSU, getting his master's in public administration. Uh, very, very sharp, sharp young man. And uh, I'm very excited about the fact that he has already identified local government and wanting to be a future city manager or city administrator. So hopefully um, he'll enjoy working with me and I don't dissuade him from that path <laughs> too far. Um, but just wanted to share if you may see him about three days a week working with me. He's, he is needing to get about 300 hours in the next 12 weeks. So you see quite a bit of him and he'll be attending um, some of our planning commission and board meetings and getting experience there. Um, also mayor and I, um, participated in a meeting with our hospital CEO, Rich Ellis, and representatives from Vanderbilt. It was a very good meeting. I we were really pleased to hear about um, some very significant investments that Vanderbilt's making in our local hospital and uh, can't wait to kind of see more as, the, as those changes unfold. Um, and thankful for the partnership. We still have a very strong partnership with our local hospital. Uh, also, Winston Brooks and I continue to work on the ACE, Advanced Coding Education Academy, in partnership with the city schools. Uh, we had a meeting just today to sort of talk about um, a formal memorandum of understanding and roles and responsibilities between the city and the school board. And so I just wanted to share with you that we continue making progress and, uh, and working towards setting that program up. Also uh, in the city, we are currently conducting annual evaluations. So we do this once a year, all of our employees um, undergo a review. And so I am doing that with all the department heads and we'll have that done by the end of this week and uh, appreciate and understand that you are also working on an evaluation for me. And so I, I think that's important uh, for my leadership team that they see that I am also being held accountable. So I appreciate you doing that and taking your time. And just wanted to say that I am available to you if any of you want to meet one-on-one uh, -on -one and talk with me about any concerns that you have, um, or also um, tell me things that are going well. So I always appreciate that too. Um, and then also we are starting our preliminary budget work for the annual budget. Uh, we always start by making sure that we're ending the year strong. And so uh, I think I've mentioned this to you in the past, but we will be bringing a, uh, a budget amendment to you in March. Uh, our finance director is assisting me working on that right now and making sure, especially in this budget year, where we know we started out the year with a, a very difficult to forecast revenues and very, uh, let's say restricted expenditures, we'll be looking for an amendment that will help us finish out the, this year strong and put some money back in places where we need to increase spending a little bit to do that. And then as soon as we get through that, just a few weeks later, we'll start having our department meetings and working towards building a, a list of requests and priorities for next year's budget. And then a couple other things, I wanted to give you an update uh, with the police department building. We'll be uh, walking the property and reviewing the final punch list items on the 17th, but we have achieved what they call substantial completion now, um, which means that we've fully, we've taken ownership of the building, we're insuring the building, and we could for all, uh, you know, intents and purposes use the building. Um, it's that complete at this point and uh, expecting 
waiting on our furniture purchases to come in, but expecting those mid-March. And then last, on our 20-year growth plan, the comprehensive land use plan, uh, we received seven proposals as of the deadline Friday, and this, the selection committee has just received copies of those and is starting to review those now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moody. I believe you have some other folks you need to introduce to make the presentation tonight. I do. Tonight, uh, I will, I'd like to introduce Chief Shastin, our fire chief, for just to give you an overview of his annual report. And uh, also next meeting, this sort of is a, a precursor to the budget meetings that we'll begin having. But next meeting, we'll have one from the police department. So Chief Shastin, turn it to thank, thank you, Ms. Moody. Uh, I have uh, included in the packet tonight a copy of our annual report from the fire department and I'm just going to touch on some highlights and I'll start to be available at the end when I finish if you have any questions or, or stop me if you run on something you want to hear about right then. Uh, just flipping through some of the pages we we did quite a bit this year even with the restrictions we were under however I, I think back in the in the early spring when we had the bad weather the storms we were able to collect a lot of items to send up to Cookville, Putnam County for their tornado storm disaster. And, and that seems like that was so long ago, but that was, that was before COVID hit and we were, we were helping other, other areas. We were able to help other areas. Once the COVID hit, boy, all of that stuff just kind of tightened up. So we, we've been just trying to, to maintain our own city. We did have an employee of the month with uh, Richard Steiner the fire marshal, but we were, we were proud of him for that. And we also are honored to have the world's tallest firefighter that is confirmed by the Guinness Book of World Records. And that went off with a lot of help from Dr. Blanks. We appreciate all your help in the, the measuring of the world's tallest firefighter. We did uh, enjoy celebrating a great career and retirement with Tim Stubberfield, the deputy fire chief. He retired uh, with almost 30 years with the city and uh, he, he comes by quite regularly and visits with us and kind of rubs it in that he's out riding around enjoying himself. But uh, we definitely miss him. We were able to uh, get uh, MTAS to help us to look for a new replacement assistant chief. And we were fortunate to be able to hire Larry Sloan. He comes to us with about 20 years of career experience in the metropolitan area, as well as some county fire department experience. And he is leading up our training division. And we are really experiencing some great things with him because he kind of brings a whole new aspect uh, to, to our, our small department. And we feel like that's gonna be a great match. And we're just proud to have Larry with us. And uh, then we're looking at uh, some training that we're doing. Of course, we, we pictured some chainsaw training. Uh, a lot of people don't realize what the fire department does. So this annual report just kind of lets you know that, that we kind of are a jack of all trades. Uh, during storms, we are out with uh, public works and with the utility crews clearing roads and uh, stuff like this. So we have to have training in so many different, so many different aspects, uh, kind of like the Boy Scout. We just have to be prepared for whatever happens. So our department, our guys and girls do a great job of, we have not been to a single situation that we couldn't handle. So I, I'm going to knock on wood so something doesn't happen crazy tonight, I hope. But we've been able to handle the calls and, and, and satisfy the people. And, and our goal is when we arrive to make things better, at least not make them worse. So, so we're real, real proud of the care and the techni technical experience and technical abilities that our people have to handle. Uh, you know, it's, it's most of the time it's the people's worst day. And that's when they call us. So we're just proud of everyone that has, has shown up through this pandemic and continue to work. Even though some of their families were struggling, we have had some of our firefighters actually come down with the virus. So it made it tough on them, but they, they were able to recover and come back to work under full, full operation. So we're, we're thankful for that. And our statistics, we uh, only had 10 structure fires this year. So that is an excellent mark that we're keeping those numbers down. And I feel like it's directly a reflection of our fire prevention that uh, Melissa Allen heads up, as well as our fire prevention with our fire marshal, 
uh, Richard Steiner, which was the inspector. He recently retired. We have hired Nick Kimbrough, which he has uh, stepped right in and is doing an excellent job in fire prevention. So we're gonna continue that program and because it has been a huge success. We also, uh, you'll notice towards the back, page 10, we uh, operate with the state fire marshal uh, real close uh, with this fire smoke alarm program. And they provided us with a banner that says close the door uh, that can prevent fire spread. So we have placed that banner at city hall and other key locations around the city. Real quick, some highlights of some things we did in 2020. With the help of Chief Jason Williams at the police department and uh, Alderman Daniel Berry being on the comm center board, the Telehome Emergency Services were able to begin an upgrade process to become digital with our radio communication system. We also acquired a new radio tower site more towards the middle of town, which improved our communications abilities. So we're gonna be leading the charge in the county going digital. And we couldn't have done that without the help of Alderman Barry and Chief Williams. And it's, it's a, been a great improvement. And we are just, we're just proud to, to be moving forward with our communication abilities. Uh, the portable radio is definitely the lifeline of every firefighter. So we put a portable radio in the hand of every firefighter when they come to work. And, and we're just proud to be able to provide that. And thank you to the Board of Mayor and Alderman for, for funding that upgrade. Also, we uh, install new exhaust system removal systems that hook to the, to the fire trucks, the fire engines. And when the engine starts, the, the fan comes on and pulls all that, that toxic carcinogen causing exhaust out of the building and protects our firefighters and protects our buildings and any visitors that might happen to be here. So uh, we were very blessed to be able to put that in the budget and actually get that approved and installed. And we have completed that project as well. And we also, there is a, a snapshot of some new battery powered extrication equipment. Uh, the new vehicles are being made with much stronger steel. And actually some of the equipment that we had, we found out was not able to cut some of that steel. So. We had to upgrade that and we've uh, fully funded those projects and we've got both rescue trucks fully equipped with new battery powered equipment. So finally, we just like to thank the board for their support. We, uh, we, we made it through 2020, <clears throat> we're looking forward and uh, I'll be available and be on here to answer any questions that anybody may have, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Ms. Moo, would you like to introduce our team that's going to talk about our website design and development. I would, thank you. Um, tonight we have asked David May with Civic Engage to join us. He is the, represents the vendor that our selection committee chose for the new city website project. And I know many of you will be interested to hear some of the features and functionality that we are hoping to get out of the new website. Um, some of our top priorities, of course, are that it be very user friendly and content rich. And I think the tools that they offer will help us get there. And so I'll be brief and uh, let David May kind of give you an overview of the Civic Engage or Civic Plus is their parent company um, about their website and their features. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for the time this evening to just share a little bit with you about the exciting partnership. We're looking forward to working with you all. And I'll tell you, I, uh, there's a lot of exciting things going on in your community. I look forward to uh, featuring the world's tallest firefighter on, on this uh, website. I Googled that immediately, six feet, 11 inches. That's uh, crazy. So uh, in, uh, impressive. So I uh, wanted to share a little bit with you. I'm gonna try to share my screen here let me shut my camera off. Maybe that'll help with that. And let me see if we can get this going for you. Let me know if you see that here in just a moment. Uh, should be seeing uh, Civic Plus now on the screen. Everybody see that okay? Yep, all yeah, right. Good. Awesome, okay. So a little bit about our company, just to, uh, to get us started here. Um, Civic Plus is the largest provider of local government websites and other tools needed to uh, communicate and uh, stay in touch with citizens. Uh, and uh, we have uh, several other products. So if you're thinking about how can uh, Tallahoma grow with uh, this website and uh, really other services in future, 
Uh, down the right-hand column of this, you'll see Civic Engage, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. That's the name of the website product. Below that, Civic Clerk, Civic HR, Civic Ready, Civic Rec, and then uh, Connect, C Click Fix, Civil Space, all different products with different uh, focuses. But uh, each of those can uh, help you guys in different ways. So uh, uh, landing with the website first is terrific, but know that there's a lot you can do to grow in scope and uh, continue this journey with Civic Plus. Uh, we have over 4,000 local governments, uh, obviously the largest provider uh, in the United States and on up into Canada as well. Uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, over 100,000 users. Those are uh, government folks uh, like the aldermen and, and uh, city employees that are able to use these tools. So we build our tools in a, in a very easy way to use so that a number of people, department heads and so forth through the city will be able to update the website and keep information relevant. We are connecting 250 million and more citizens with their local government through these uh, products. Uh, I'm gonna stop there on that and let me see if I can share. I wanted to, uh, to share an email with you I received today as we start this conversation. Uh, I was very impressed to get this and it, it is from a, a neighboring county, Washington County. And uh, it's from Susan Saylor, the communications director there. And I did just get this today, as you can see, but uh, Washington County, Tennessee, went live with Civic Plus December 28th, one of our newer sites. And uh, she states that she's launched 14 to 15 websites over the years. And I think she says uh, something about number of years she's been in um, business of communications. But, but the statement I wanted you to have a look at is uh, that she loved this. And she says, hands down, most professional project management deployment team that she's ever worked with in 20 plus years. And she goes on to say some other very nice things about us. But uh, I think knowing who you're partnering with and what kind of expertise we bring to the table is important. There's that new Washington County, uh, Tennessee uh, website. And I've, I'm, I'm going to, I could take you all over the United States, but I'm going to stick in Tennessee uh, tonight and show you a few things and a few thoughts about uh, design. I'm going to start with Lebanon, uh, Tennessee, and show you a little bit about their website. First thing you'll notice, there's a big black banner across the top of the page. That's the Alert Center. And this is a tool that you can use to get information out quickly when needed. Now, it not only puts a banner across the, the front page, it could be across other pages. It also can send out emails and texts to citizens, constituents. It can also link out to other social media. Now, a lot of this is being used for COVID-19, you'll see right now with a lot of our uh, folks, but it's been used for all sorts of things uh, from water boil orders and so forth. A little bit on design. You notice at the top of the screen, we have what we call mega menus and uh, the number of those you'll have in your design will, will be decided by you and your team as we uh, work through the design, but they have government, services, business, community, careers, and my favorite is how do I? And the reason it's my favorite is, you know, a lot of times government thinks of themselves uh, as they are structured, but citizens don't. They may not know who they need to speak with within the government, but they know what they want to do. So how do I breaks it down into uh, citizens needs? How do I apply for, contact, find, submit? So those are some, some uh, great things to think about with that. Beyond that, I want to show you another feature that's here on the Lebanon site, and that is Notify Me. And the Notify Me is a way to stay in contact with citizens, even when they don't come to your website. We're going to help you build a beautiful website, easy to, easy to update, easy for citizens to find things. But the truth is, every citizen doesn't get up every morning and come to the government website to see what's going on. So how do they stay in touch? Notify Me allows you to have as many categories as you like and to be as granular as you want on this, but you'll notice government jobs. This is some that Lebanon is using. They have the alert center, which we talked about. Now people can sign up to be alerted by email or text uh, whenever something changes. You may have people who always wanna know what, the, what bids are coming out or what jobs are available, newsflash, calendar. You can see they've got quite a few different categories there. But Notify Me allows you to allow citizens to say, this is what I want to know about what's going on in my community. And I want you to alert me 
when it happens. And you can do that uh, very easily with that, that feature. I think that's an Im important piece to show. Um, Cleveland, uh, Tennessee, uh, again, the coronavirus uh, alert across the top they are using. And I also want to share with you that uh, we go to Cleveland. Let me get back to the beginning here of Cleveland. I was on their agenda center, which I do want to show you uh, here in a minute. But in Cleveland, jobs and questions um, it was what I was going to pull up for you. So let's take a look here. Uh, they have a boards and commission sticky button here. You can see how the information is uh, placed across there. Let me take a look at, let's go to, um, let me go over to Gallatin. I'm, I'm going to take you around a little bit here. I want to use my time with you guys. So Gallatin um, has a couple of things I think are interesting. Now, of course, they have it linked out to some social media. They are using their alert center for uh, a construction and also here you'll see a, count, a council work session. So you can use this for whatever you might need within your community. If you look down through Gallatin, you can see how it is uh, laid out. Now this was interesting to me. They have a section called Ask Angela. Does anyone know Angela in Gallatin, Tennessee? I don't, but apparently she knows a lot because they have a button for her. I'm, I'm assuming she's someone who's been with the city for a long time. But uh, what she is utilizing here is the form center. And the form center is another piece you have. You can create easily fillable forms. By the way, all of this is built to resize and work on any device, cell phone, tablet, whatever your citizen is coming to this on, it's gonna look great and function. But here's a fillable form and it's Ask Angela, she knows who you need to talk with. So that's, that's how they're helping uh, get people to where they need to go with the Ask Angela function. Are there any questions about what I've covered so far? I do wanna ask that. Nope, okay, I'll, I'll continue on here with uh, Murfreesboro. Um, Murfreesboro uh, has a button here for parks and rec. I wanna show you what a uh, department header package uh, can look like. Uh, you'll notice that this has their very own drop down menus just about park and rec and then it has buttons that are specific to the uh, parks and rec within Murfreesboro so uh, a great piece there as well uh, let's go back to Gallatin I did want to find let me see where their agendas are here let me go back to the front page I want to share that with you. And I think that will probably be the, the last thing I share with you from, from the slideshows tonight, but applications and forms, residents, things to do within the community, how do I? So we look down here for Ask Alan, Angela, jobs, oh, job, a job, a, pl a place to find jobs as well. Great place to. Uh, to uh, put job uh, fillable forms for people who would like to find a job. So let me just search here real quick. By the way, the search is predictive. The search will uh, only search within your site. So if citizens want to find something and just like I was like, where's that agenda button? Well, I'll just go to the search. And the first thing it pulls up is agenda center. Anything you load up onto the site is going to become searchable. Now within the agenda center, and that's one thing I wanted to show you, is you can have as many different uh, agendas as you want in the agenda center. Uh, here they have it divided by city council. Uh, here's agendas, you can download the packet here. Uh, Historical district commission has their own, municipal board of zoning appeals. So this becomes the place to create and store those agendas. Citizens can find it very quickly and easily. By the way, two things I want to share with you very quickly as I close off here for you is one, that everything here uh, is, of course, set to be ADA compliant. We only build government websites, so uh, we want everything to be ADA compliant so all citizens can get to what they are uh, looking for there. So, and the other piece is that we have a theory of two clicks. Your citizens or you, when you're looking for something on your website, should be able to find it within 
two clicks. If you can find it within two clicks, you're probably going to go on the website and find it and do what you need to do. If it takes more than two clicks, you're probably going to give up on that piece and call or walk into an office instead of uh, be able to take care of business online. And our job is to help you serve those citizens as quickly as possible and make you as online responsive as we possibly can. I hope I haven't gone over my time, but that's uh, some of the information I wanted to share with you tonight. Again, we're very excited uh, for the possible partnership and, and get started on a new website for you. And I would ask if you have any questions. I've got a question, David. Um, I know that just over time that I've had several citizens talk about our current website, and, and I, I do know that it's definitely in need of being updated, um, but I, it, it looks like from what you were showing us there that finding public documents would be a pretty easy thing to do. Um, and I just, you know, I think that's going to be really, really good because I know that we're all here wanting to promote transparency and making it as easy as possible for people to see what's going on and and become involved in their government, I think is really, it's pretty remarkable. Um, and I, I love that email feature where people could be notified if there was a zoning change in their area or anything like that. I mean, that's something that, wow, it's just nice to be a part of the 21st century. So thank you, David. Thank you. You know, you guys talked about so many things going on within the community and all through the meeting as I was listening in, I was thinking, oh, if you had notify me or, oh, if you had your calendars or if you wanted to reach out to citizens, how you could get this information out so easily. So that's, that's really what makes Civic Plus a great company, I believe, is that it's not just a website. It's a website and all the tools that go behind it that local government needs to be able to be transparent and communicate. Any other questions? Thank you, Robin. Did, did I hear you say that this would be done next week? I wish it could be done next week. Um, as I've got the contract here in my pocket to get us. No, I, uh, as soon as soon as we get going, there is a there is a process to it, and we will get that done as quickly as we can and as comfortably for you, as well. And that's the other thing I really liked about that that letter I shared. Is she was talking about the process of uh, getting the site built. And, and then she goes on to talk a little bit about the partnership that she's already feeling with support. Support is available to you guys 24 hours a day. And uh, I think that's one of the things that the folks who've been looking at us uh, from, uh, from your city are very impressed with is the uh, support. Mr. Mayor, one of the things you, I didn't hear you talk about was the updating and <clears throat> maintaining this website. But in the literature that you've shared with us, you did talk about how each Twice. Well, we each in the department could make input to feed this this website so that so that it's a month it's a, a lot of people can interact with it to maintain it and keep it current. You don't have to depend on a quote webmaster to update your website. That is that is absolutely correct. And during the build process, you guys will decide who can touch which parts of that website there's a permission tree if you will so in your department you may have permission to create you may have permission to create and publish but if you only have permission to create you would create and then it would hand it off to someone up the permission tree who would look through that and give it permission so it's not just that everybody can get in and touch the website but the people you want to can and they can specifically in their areas to the level of permission that you want them to have. So uh, it'll, it's a very responsive tool. If you can uh, type in Word, and if you can drag and drop a picture, uh, you can build a web page within uh, this uh, tool. I think that's a very important feature. We thank you for your presentation this evening. Thank you. Thank Does anyone you. have any further questions? If not, we'll, we'll move right along to the consent agenda. Let me remind you that all matters listed on the consent agenda are routine and will be consent acted in one motion. There'll be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or a citizen so requests. And in which case, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. During that portion of the meeting reserved for comments from citizens as shown on the agenda, citizens may request that the board remove an item from the consent agenda so the discussion may be held on that item. So with this item, let me go through the consent agenda by items and number 21-15 are simply the minutes from the January 25th meeting. 
21-16 is to adopt the FY21 budget adoption schedule. And you may see that, and it's just simply a schedule and that's on page 40, 52 of your handout. Item 21-17, to accept the donation of a dryer valued at approximately $500 from courtesy cleaners for the use of the Tallahassee Fire Station number two. That's on page 54 <laughs> for you. Item number 2118 is to approve an application to the Department of Homeland Security's assistance to firefighters grant. That's a program to support the requirements for 45 self-contained breathing apparatus, an estimated total project value of $430,000 with a required local match of 5%. That's approximately $21,500 for the Tallahassee Fire Department. So I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda. I have a motion from Alderman Blackwell. Second. And a second from Alderman Dunn. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Ms. Uh, Recorder, would you please call the roll? Yes, we're voting yes or no on the consent agenda. Noah. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Blanks. Yes. Alderperson Almacher. Yes. Barry? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Sorry, yes? Yes. Sorry. Alder Person Dunn? Yes. McGee? Yes. Thank you. That's seven yeses. Motion carries. <clears throat> Under old business, <clears throat> we have an ordinance. This is on second reading. Ordinance number 1546, an ordinance to amend the zoning map of the city of Tallahoma as set forth in the Tallahoma Municipal Number 1392 to rezone a parcel of, at 104 Southside Street. So Coffee County Tax Map 127F, Group J, Parcel 17.01, from C2, General Commercial, to R3, High Density Residential. That's the ordinance. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion from Alderman Blanks and a second from Alderman Dunn. Discussion? If no one else has a discussion, I would like to pose a question for this proposed ordinance change. This is property at uh, currently C2. It's in a mixed use area down South Side Street. The lot size is 5,000 square feet. In that commercial property, C2, there is no requirements or a minimum for a minimum lot size. So the property currently meets the requirement for C2. If we approve this rezoning to R3, it does not meet the zone requirements for R3, which is 7,500 square feet. My concern is that we're approving, <clears throat> we're approving this lot for R3 when it doesn't meet the zoning requirements. I have a, I have a problem with that. I've asked Ms. Mary Samatiego, excuse me for mispronouncing your name, uh, if you would comment on my comments. Um, yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Mary Samaniego, um, for the record. Um, the property owner, the applicant, uh, uh, purchased this property with the intent of rehabbing a uh, house that's, that's significantly dilapidated and has been vacant for over a year. Unfortunately, in the CT zoning district, a single family resident is not a permitted use. So they were not allowed to um, uh, get a building permit to remodel the house. The only way to legally um, be able to proceed with remodeling the house and bringing up to um, habitable standards is to rezone the property to a residential zoning district. Um, unfortunately, um, in this situation within the city of Tullahoma, there is not any residential zoning district that allows for a 5,000 square foot minimum lot size. Um, so um, through 
review of the land development comprehensive plan and the zoning regulations. The R3 um, zoning district was the closest zoning district to the standards of the existing lot um, that the applicant could apply for. Um, legally, that was also in compliance with the residential um, category of the comprehensive plan. So the um, this rezoning would allow the property owner to re rehabilitate and fully develop the property for single family residential um, development, which is what it was historically developed for. Um, the only standard that it is not in compliance with is a 7,500 square foot minimum lot size. It meets all other standards, but the approval of the rezoning is permissible within your code. Okay. Did uh... Then I didn't understand how we could approve this going to R3 with it not meeting the minimum lot size. It, it's a permit, you're allowed to rezone to a zoning district if it's an existing lot of record. We're not creating a lot, it's an existing lot of record. So you can rezone to that zoning category and then once it's within that zoning category, it could not be further subdivided down below the minimum lot size. So I have a question. I understand that there's already a structure existent on the lot. It's a dilapidated residential building, correct? Correct. And so basically the owner now is simply trying to remodel a dilapidated, already in existence structure. I feel like it might actually even constitute a taking if we don't allow such to take place. And I don't think that that, I mean, I'm just thinking for everybody's benefit that this, we really only have a couple of choices here. And one is completely unfair to the, the home, to the owners of the lot now, so. And, and if I may, I, um, I've got to agree with Jenna on that for sure, Alderman Amaker. Um, I think something else that's happened that's unfair here in this situation, and this, it seems like over the last several years, I've seen this happen with a handful of properties where someone buys a property and feels like, or, or because it was the way it was being used or whatever, that it was either zoned residential or zoned commercial. We had, and, and then they find out after they've bought it, that is zoned something else. And I don't, I don't think that's right. And I did ask our, our um, um, Steve Worsham if he could look to see if there was some way we could create an ordinance for disclosure, because I feel like people have, when, when you're buying a property, and, and especially if you're a first time a homeowner, a first time business owner, there are certain questions you just don't know that you're supposed to ask. And I would have never um, looked at a house that was being used as a house and not assumed that it was zoned residential or a business that's in a business property that has been used as a restaurant that's not zoned um, as, as commercial. So, um, and, and I don't know, Steve, if you could speak to that a little bit. I, and I know I, I, I haven't given you much time to work on that. So I apologize if you don't, if you aren't ready to report. No, no, I, I, I can comment on that. Um, the, my research is indicated and I've actually dictated the email to you that you haven't gotten yet, but this is a state function. We won't, we cannot create an ordinance that would supersede the state law. What we need to do is to, I think, uh, to, uh, ask all of the realtors in our town when they handle the sale of real property to tell the people that are going to buy the property that they need to check with planning and codes in order to make sure that the intended uses for the property will comply with our zoning ordinance. Uh, that, I talked to the NTAS people too. I just didn't simply rely upon my own research for that. I wish we could do it, but they say that they didn't think that we could enact an ordinance like that. Uh, so I think it's a matter of education for people. We might want to put some kind of information like that on our website. Uh, you know, the old the old saying is that you're presumed to know the law. And unfortunately, that operates to the disadvantage of many, many people. But that seems to be what the situation is in this case, Ms. Dunn. Well, thank you, Steve. And, and if there are some realtors listening, I do hope that you will assist us in, in making sure that our, our, our citizens are well educated in this. So thank you, Steve. Yes, you're here. welcome. Um, also, in a response to Ms. Dunn, um, I have in previous um, positions actually approach the board of realtors and given presentations um, to their members at like quarterly or, or um, monthly meetings about how to check the zoning and the importance of checking the zoning. So realtors are informed. So I could certainly um, approach the board of realtors or whatever applicable organization is here to, to do that. Cause that is a very, very important 
um, aspect because most people off the street don't don't understand about zoning and don't know to check it. And there are a significant amount of properties in the in the um, city of Tullahoma that I have noticed that either they're commercially zoned or they're in their residential properties or vice versa, properties that are commercially used, but they're actually zoned residential. So there are quite a, a few nonconformities out there. Oh, my Barry, have you had your hand up? Uh, just real real quick, so I asked this on the last one, so I've got to ask again to be to be fair. Uh, I agree with Mayor Noah, and in, in I'm pretty big on setting precedents, uh, and I agree with Alderman Almacher and Dunn at the same time. Um, we had one of these, I guess, two or three meetings ago. It was kind of similar where we did vote down. Um, that that one in that case my question was are they able to accomplish what they want to accomplish with what they currently have and the answer in that case was no so i want to make sure being fair that i asked that same question in this my understanding is they cannot accomplish what they want to accomplish with the current re the current zoning in this case correct Yes, sir, that is correct. They cannot, under the current zoning of C2, they cannot um, rehabilitate the structure to be a detached single family use. Okay. I, I just, I, if I didn't ask that, I would have felt not. Alderman Berry. Oh, sorry. Alderman Black. I, I, and I was going to speak to, I think what Alderman Berry was speaking about was the right of way acquisition for that one home that had um, needed more space to build a, and I think that's different from a rezone in some ways as well. Um, well. I supported this at the planning commission level and plan to again. And the reason why is that this home has been uh, a home for as long as it's been a home. So in my mind, that's what somebody was purchasing it for. Um, and we need to make sure that we're supporting them to be able to um, update it and, you know, uh, updating a home in our town. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I love that. So. That's where I stand on this. And I just want to commend the, the prop. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. I, I well, I, sorry. And I, I, I just want to say that I commend the, the property owner for, for trying to update it. I mean, it's the, we, we run the risk of, of, of having blight there otherwise. So I do, um, I do appreciate them making that a, a habit, habit, a livable place to, <laughs> to live. Thank you. Well, uh, let me inject one. My, my position is that I want to protect the property owner. I want to protect the property owner because I don't want him to make a sizable investment there and then find that his lot size is illegal and he can't, uh, he can't use it like, like he intends to. So that's my concern. And Mr. Lance San Diego, I think that's the answer that you gave that he, with his, at the current zoning, he can't use the property as it's as he's asking it to be rezoned. Correct. So, Hold on, Barry. So if we rezone this and then he comes to planning and codes with plans and says, I want to build this house or get permits, is he going to get those permits? Yes. Yes, if he complies okay, with the standard, yes. Okay, 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 that's, okay, sorry. All right, good. I just that's wanted to make why, sure. So it's essentially, sure. it's essentially necessary that we do rezone this so that he can be approved for his permits is what I'm understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and if I could add one more thing that some of you may not have this background, that the property had been used as a residence. Um, the, the underlying is commercial and that we consider that legally non-conforming as long as there's not a vacancy. If you have continuous use, even though the property was rezoned in 2010 to commercial, it continued to be used as residential. And that's how we ended up in the situation we're in that the use was one thing, the zoning was another, I believe there was a fire uh, at this property and that it has sat vacant for maybe over two years at this point. 
So when it sits vacant for that amount of time, it loses that, that ability to continue the non-conforming use. That's why now when he went in, started doing repairs, wanting to renovate, he found out that there was a conflict and he, he would have to have he would have to rezone the property back to residential before he could proceed. So does hopefully that helps. I think this is a case where um, you're having to weigh, there's consequences either way for the property owner. I think if it were to remain commercial, he would have a very difficult time complying with the other standards of our zoning ordinance, landscaping, setbacks, parking requirements, all of those things on a 5,000 square foot lot would be very difficult. So to me, we have one small variance um, from conforming with the law under residential where we would have probably many more non-complying situations under commercial zoning. Okay, thank you, Ms. Moody. If there's no further discussion, Ms. Ms. Golan, would you? Cool. I can, I'll just, if I can add one more thing, I know Jennifer and I talked about how sometimes people believe that their house or their, their property is zoned a certain way because of the tax record. Can you speak to that just quickly, Jennifer? Sure, I would be happy to almost on a daily basis. And I'm sure this happens in the planning office as well. We have to explain to citizens why their tax card and the way their property is assessed is different than zoning. And so we use the same words, the tax assessor assesses property as commercial, residential, agricultural, or, um, and we use those same terms in zoning, but they're very different. So the assessor is looking at how it's currently used and applying that 25% or 40% rate. In zoning, we're talking about allowable uses um, and what's consistent with our land use plan. And so you can't look that up on the tax card, unfortunately. That's something they have to call our planning office to verify. Okay, if there's no further comment, Ms. Golan, you may call the roll now. Okay, we're voting yes or no on the second and final reading of ordinance number 1546, NOAS. I'm going to vote in on the recommendation of staff and vote yes. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Blanks. Yes. Alderperson Amacher. Yes. Alderperson Barry. Yes. Alderperson Blackwell. Yes. Alderperson Dunn. Yes. Alderperson McGee. Yes. Thank you. That's seven in favor. Motion carries. <clears throat> There's no other old business. Let's go to new business. Ordinance number 1547 is an ordinance of the city of Tullahoma to amend Title II the boards and all boards and commissions, etc. for the Tullahoma Municipal Code to provide for a definite partial terms for, for to define partial terms and adopt on the first of two readings. Mr. Worsham has addressed that earlier, but that's you can read that on page 71. And the extent of that is that we in the code. We have at Holloman very suggestion at last board meeting, he suggested that we define the extent to which we would make an exception for a partial term. And the new ordinance reads that if a person serves less than six months, it will not be defined as a term. That's the essence of the change in the ordinance. I hear a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion from Baldwin Berry and seconded by Baldwin Blackwell. Any discussion on that? Mr. Mayor, I have just a real quick, real quick comment. And I meant to say this in my comments at the beginning. I wanted to set, we can't change votes, uh, but I do want to go on record saying that I do support uh, the nomination of Mr. Search to, to that board. Um, and I thank you, Mr. Worsham, for quickly working on, on this ordinance. Um, but I do want to put in the minutes that I, though I voted no, I wasn't the person. It was just a procedural thing. I do 
he has my full thank support. You, thank you for your motion and thank you for the second. Vote Ms. Goldie, may call the roll. Yes. And we're voting on ordinance number 1547, first reading, Mayor Noahs. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Blanks. Yes. Alderperson Amacher. Yes. Barry. Yes. Blackwell. Yes. Dunn. Yes. McGee. Yes. That's seven yeses. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, let me go back, uh, Alderman Barry, to your comment. You mm -hmm. did indicate that you would like to change your vote on that uh, on that earlier motion that we had last meeting. And in accordance with Robert's rules of order, if you choose to change that vote, you can ask for someone from that was in the majority to make a motion for a re-vote. Or you can ask the panel, ask the board, if they have any objection to your changing your vote, if there is no objection to your changing the vote, it can be recorded in the minutes. Is there any objection from the board from Alderman Barry to change his vote from the previous previous vote on this issue? Yes, I have an objection. I, I feel it only fair. I objected to Rupa doing the same thing at one point that I, it would only be fair. I, I, I don't think it makes a difference. I think he's made his intent clear that he is in fact in support and it was a procedural thing, but I don't think we need to be in the habit of correcting records of minutes. So I do have an objection. I, I would, I'm okay with that. It just in the minutes, if we just mark down that my comment. All right. Thank you. Okay, number <clears throat> next new business item is number 2219 is considered the reappointment of Ms. Ms. Jennifer Benetti Longini to the Tullahoma Airport for a five year term expiring on February 27th. That's on page, her credentials are on page 73. And I might comment that Ms. Longini has been on the board for one term. She is eligible for reappointment and she does desire to be reappointed. So I hear a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion to approve Alderman Berry. Second, if Alderman Dunn. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Rose Mary Golan, you may call the roll. Okay, this is to vote on Ms. Jennifer being reappointed to the airport authority, Mayor Noes. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Blanks. Mayor Pro Tem Blanks. Yes. <laughs> Alderperson Amacher. Yes. Barry. Yes. Blackwell. Yes. Dunn. Yes. And McGee. Yes. Thank you. That's seven yeses. Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number 2120 is to consider the appointment of a qualified applicant to the Tullahoma Airport Authority for a five year term expiring 27th of February, 2026. We've had uh, two qualified applicants uh, make their positions, make their desires known to serve on that board, but it will require a motion, uh, a nomination from a board member or, from, or a mayor. And uh, do I hear a nomination to serve on the airport authority? I nominate Steve Cope, Mayor. We have a nomination for Cope. Is there any further nomination? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Okay. Yes, no vote on Steve Cope to the airport authority. Mayor Noes. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Blanks. Yes. Alderperson Amacher. Yes. Barry. Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Dunn? Yes. And McGee? Yes. That's seven yeses. Seven yes and motion carries. There is no other new business, so we will adjourn the Board of Mayor and Alderman. We'll go to the beer board. Call the beer board to order. We'll ask for any public comments.
So there are no pub no no public comments. We'll go to the consent agenda. That'll be the minutes of the 25th beer board record meeting. Your motion? Motion to approve the beer board minutes. A motion second. From, motion from Alderman Blanks and a second from Alderman. Me, McGee. McGee, thank you. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, Ms. Golan, would you call the roll? Yes or no for consent agenda, Mayor Nois. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Blanks. Yes. Alderperson Amacher. Yes. Barry. Yes. Blackwell. Yes. Dunn. Yes. And McGee. Yes. That's seven yeses. Thank you. Motion, motion carries. There's no other whole business. We'll go to new business to approve a beer permit application for on and off premises permit for an existing business at 122 West Lincoln Street. Okay. Okay, that is for new owners, Ms. Cavella Swall and Mr. Nicholas Conley and Ms. Patricia Ann Reeder. With the manager in charge of beer sales, Ms. Reeder be in charge of beer sales. So please see the note on police compliance form. That's on following pages in your handout. Um, have you had a chance to look at the uh, application? Yes, we can make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve, second. Second. I have a second from Alderman Blanks. For discussion, it should be noted that uh, are all the filings in order, Ms. 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 Golan? Yes, there are. Uh, they are in order. And do you want me to further comment? We do have. We do have an issue. There is the requirement that. Uh, let me read the requirement regarding the issuance of permits to persons convicted of certain crimes. Are prohibited. And this concerns the issuance of permits to persons convicted of certain crimes are permitted. And the first section there of that section, you may read it it's in your handout. No beer permit shall be issued to any person, firm, or corporation, joint stock, company, syndicate, or application, or any person having at least 5% interest in the applicant business that's been convicted of any violation of laws against possession sale, manufacture, transportation of beer or other alcoholic beverage, or any other felony crime involving moral perpetuity with the past 10 years. Go on to item two under that. It says further, a beer permit may be denied where an owner or a manager has been, been convicted of driving under the influence. If you look at the police report, you do find that there is a conviction for driving under the influence. The uh, police report indicates that the above named applicant has had two arrests and convictions for DUI and a lengthy history of traffic and driving violations. So that's on the record and it's so noted in the applicant. However, I will remind you that the applicant is a the was parcel owner but there he was not in charge of beer sales so we have a motion and a second to approve this application is there any further discussion is the owner in attendance on on the feed tonight i had asked that he 
I had Miss Moody, did you know if he did plan to be on in attendance? Yes, he is. Uh, yes, he, they are all present. The manager in charge of beer sales, Ann Ryder, um, Mr. Conley, and uh, Ms. Kavala. They're all together on, jointly on the meeting. Ms. Conley, do you have any comments to make? Ms. Golden? Go ahead. Just that it, it's permissible and it's up to the beer board to decide. Um, the main concern is that I'll give any co major corporation example, um, <laughs> more than likely the owner president is not necessarily in town on a day-to-day -day basis. So kind of splitting hairs, but as long as the manager is not the one who had been convicted of a DUI, that would disqualify them unless they attended and passed the responsible vendor program and was permitted with one of those um, ABC cards. But since he is an owner, uh, it's up to the board to decide. Okay, thank you, Ms. Golden. Uh, does anyone from uh, 122 West Care to make a comment? I may. I would like to. Go ahead. All right. um, I'm Nicholas Conley. Uh, I'd like to think that in my 20s, I made some decisions that were poor. And I've been very fortunate to have the support of the community and friends to uh, be able to become sober. And after uh, three years of AA and other support systems and being around the alcohol and not having an issue and no longer having an issue, I do feel confident to be an owner here. And um, and, and I, I won't actively sell as was stated, I will just be an owner. So I won't always be present, but uh, I would just like that to be taken into consideration that I am three years sober and I'm working and I'm gonna keep that working for it. And that I understand that you will not be in charge of beer sales. Yes, sir. I will not be. I have a comment. Yes, Marker. I would just like to commend you. I have a real heart for um, uh, rehabilitation and the efforts and the strides that you have made. And, and I think it's absolutely commendable and and uh, want to continue to encourage you and and say that you know it's pretty awesome now that you're going to be a business owner and and we definitely want to support you as a as the city and as the board and i know that that i'm not alone in saying that and so um i, I wish your business the best of luck thank you Ms. Almacher. any further discussion mr mayor i would like to make a comment as well yes Ms. Um, oh, Ms. Mr. Conley, um i just want to um commend him as well on his rehabilitation um and just here to continue to encourage him. That is very commendable. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman yes. McGee. Any further comment? I'll quickly reiterate what the other two aldermen said. We all make mistakes. Uh, and it's what you, what you learn from those mistakes. And there's many of us who, who could have probably fallen to one of those, um, but congratulations on on the new ownership. Any further comment? Uh, since I seconded the motion, um, you know, I commend your rehabilitation and sobriety, uh, but we're gonna hold your feet to the fire. We're, we're offering you a permit. Um, so, you know, we, we want to see continued sobriety. So we don't wanna have to come back and say, mm, you messed up. So. You know, that's our contract. That's our contract with you. You do, you do good, and we will give you a thumbs up. Continue to do good. That's all let, I have. Let me let me make a point about the uh, police record that I read into the record. Uh, Mr. Conley voluntarily noted on his application that he had these the UIs. So I commend you for noting that in your application. So it's not that do as a background check to find this, but you were very upfront with 
with pointing these out. So that goes a long way for telling me that you intend to have a very successful business there. So there's no other questions. I'll call, let Ms. Rosemary Golden call the, call the roll. Okay, yes or no, uh, voting on the beer permit for on and off at 122 West with the new owners. Mayor Noes, yes or no? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Blanks. Yes. Alderperson Amacher. Yes. Alderperson Berry. Yes. Alderperson Blackwell. Yes. Alderperson Dunn. Yes. Alderperson McGee. Yes. That's seven yeses. And the motion carries. Mr. Conley, I wish you all the luck in the world and we hope your business does well. Thank you for being a business owner in Tullahoma. We look forward to your great success. Thank you for being here to talk to us. Thank you for your staying with us for this rather lengthy two hour meeting that we've had tonight. We'll come uh, enjoy your rest when we have time. Is there any other thing that needs to come before the board? I believe there's no other new business. If there's no other new business, we will, no other old business, we'll adjourn. Everyone have a great evening. Good night. Good night. Night. Night, night John Boy. Get out of here.